Hello again, this is Deidre isaacs Halek, and we're here for another episode of Perfect Tips for Perfect Success. This time, we're talking to a very young professional. She's a student currently, aspiring towards her career goals, and we just wanted to let Perfect Tips focus on something for the younger audience. You're preparing for adulting, you're preparing for career, you're preparing for college. So let's talk adulting with Caitlin Rain Halek. Caitlin, introduce yourself, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Rain Haylock, and I'm currently a rising senior at the Savannah College of Art and Design. I'm majoring in fashion design with a minor in fashion marketing and management. You are away studying, away from home. And tell us, um, tell us a little bit about your background. What did you do before you got to college? Okay, so... I was primarily an academic before coming to college. I mean, all throughout school for the 12 years, K through 12, it was strictly academic. I think looking back at a lot of the ways that I used to entertain myself, there was always that need to want to create something and form this thing. And I didn't know how that would stem out, but it was always in the back of my mind. And then the summer before high school, you enrolled me in the summer program that Niche did with the fashion design camp hosted by Ms. Dana. And I was like, you know what? It's something to do over the summer. Let's try it out. So I did it. And I think that's when it hit that I was meant to be creating something and doing something because that whole process of, you know, going from paper to design to actual thing, real life, and looking at how that process stemmed really jolted something in me. Well, uh, folks, she outed me. She's her daughter. Yes. So, Caitlin, that was a shift for you from academic being the studious, loving to read, uh, using your time well for school, valedictorian for your high school, and now you entered college. Let's talk about how did you prepare yourself for that? I mean, I don't think Belize High School was teaching anything about fashion, right? So how did you go through that preparation process? No. So it actually took independent one-on-one study because, I mean, as we all know, there's no art design industry in Belize. So it was when we made that choice that, okay, this was something that I wanted to invest in. I knew right away that I had to find a good school abroad in order to be able to do that because, you know, staying home wasn't an option to be able to cultivate that the way in which I wanted to cultivate it. And so we reached out to Miss Dana and we did one-on-one classes on Saturdays to not only prep me for my portfolio and helping like build that portfolio, but to get a little bit of a sneak peek of what fashion entailed and what that would be like so that I didn't go into college completely green. So I worked with her since probably sophomore year of high school, kind of just building towards that experience and getting that knowledge of what the industry would be and what it could be like. And then the things that we did, the sewing introduction to sewing, the illustrations and the sketches all worked towards preparing me to create my final portfolio to submit with my application my senior year. Tell us who's Miss Dana. You, re- you made a reference to Miss Dana. Who's Miss Dana and what were those classes all about? So Ms. Dana is a Belizean fashion designer, one of the very few that exist. And she had hosted and taught the niche summer class that I had done. And a lot of the courses that I did with her was an extension of what I did that summer. So instead of, you know, that three week crash course design sketch. So we managed to take it one step at a time and it was, okay, let's look at sketching. This is how the silhouette of the 10 figure body looks like. This is the practice pages getting used to sketching because I had no art background. I, my best drawing was stick figures, let's put it that. So <laughs> we started being able to introduce me to that process and how that looked and then sewing on how, you know, different hand stitchings. And then I got a sewing machine from my grandmother who handed me down her old one. And so We took that once I got that and was like, okay, this is how the sewing machine works. These are the parts. This is how you turn it on. You don't push your foot on the pedal too hard because you're going to break it. And, you know, she walked me through that whole process and trying to bring to light the little bits and pieces of what I'd be doing if I got accepted to school and I study fashion. 
what were some of your first creations and how did that feel to create? A couple of the very first designs that I did was all creative sketching. It wasn't necessarily pencil to paper. It was more of look at what's around the house and use that to create things. So one of the first things I did was I took piping sheet and I burnt the edges and we created the dress from that. I took different scrap pieces of packaging that I'd got from like jewelry that I'd bought. We tore it up, folded it, created a sketch. I used beads and fetters and made a complete letter sketch. So those were some of the very first things that I did. Be able to sit there and think of something and then watch it go from my head to like real life was, I think for a 15 year old at the time was like mind blowing to me. Like this was actually something that I could do and it was something that I was good at. Uh, the sewing classes um, or the design classes that you did during the summer, how did that turn out? <laughs> I was the youngest person there. There were older women who were th in their 30s, in their 40s. There was one in her late 20s, and I was the youngest person there at 13 years old. How old were you? 13. To say I was intimidated was kind of an understatement. Because, you know, you walk in his room at 13 and there are these women who are already established paying their own bills in this place doing this thing. And it was like, OK, I'm a child in this room right now. But I think that's what kind of made me and Miss Dana mesh a little bit was the fact that I was so young and we kind of took a liking to each other and having her guidance throughout the process helped me a lot to be comfortable. And I, I remember thinking, I don't know if I can do this for a bit, but I stuck with it. And I think watching that growth alongside those women who were already established, already, you know, these women who had their lives, it was kind of an eye opener to me is that you can actually do this if you put your mind to it. <laughs> and it ended with? It ended with me actually, I had a sketch that I had done a couple weeks prior to the course and I pulled it out and I showed Miss Dana and I was like, this is what I want to sew. And I sewed it, my original sketch, original design, original garment, bought the fabric, sewed it. And the icing on the cake was that summer, Niche had done, not that summer, but the September after that summer, Niche had done a fashion show to honor Sonia Noel, a Caribbean fashion designer who came to Belize and did her own show. And some of our pieces from that course were showcased in that show. So I got to model my own design on the runway, photographing it after spending the three weeks making it. Now, um, you uh, said you had to identify a college to get into. Um, what helped with that process? So. If you don't know Blaze High School, BHS, a lot of their curriculum is centered towards getting students into college, mainly because they don't really follow the Caribbean or Belizean curriculum. It's more of modeled after a US-based system. You know, you take the SATs and you try to get into college and you further your education from there, you know, skipping the whole sixth form level. So the foundation of the classes that I did all my four years through BHS that shaped me in maturing me and preparing me for college level courses. And in addition to that, we had an academic guidance counselor who met with us and who sat down with us and who spoke to us from freshman year about our goals and what we wanted to do post secondary school and you know all that preparation for that. And then getting into senior year, she sat down with us again and helped us create our college plan, list of colleges to apply to. And one of the things that I had done was research into which schools were the top art and design schools to be able to apply to and be able to reach out to. And from all of them that I had researched, there were two that I felt the most drawn to, but one that I knew had my heart. And it's kind of one of those things where you can't explain it, but you just, it's, it's that gut feeling where you know, like I'm supposed to be there regardless of what it is that I end up doing in my life. I'm supposed to be there at some point. And that was SCAD. So SCAD accepted you. <laughs> SCAD gave you a scholarship and it was smooth sailing after that. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. So what was that magic like? It, it's, it's, it's weird looking back at it now 
because it's kind of one of those things where you don't really look back at it until you put yourself and you like, let me remember where I came from. But for me, junior and senior year, kind of mentally and emotionally, it was kind of a rocky road for me. And it was also at that point where I kind of realized that I didn't want to do academics anymore. And I felt kind of stuck because I felt like this was all I could do. And I just wanted to break past that for myself because I knew that there was something else out there. And so it was the December 14th, I think it was, it was either the 14th or the 15th. I was home. I didn't have to sit the exams. I was sleeping in. It was great. And then my phone buzzed and I saw that I got an email from SCAD and something told me, pull out your computer so you can check the actual full email. And it was the acceptance to SCAD. And I cried for about two hours out of pure happiness because I, it, again, that gut feeling where it was, this was where you're supposed to be. This is kind of what you're supposed to do. And they accepted me initially with a scholarship but emailed me a month later and asked, we're considering you for this other scholarship. Can you please get another recommendation letter sent in? So I had my guidance academic counselor send in another recommendation letter. And we had honestly thought that we'd get the hear back in February, but five days after she submitted it, we got the answer. It was like, yes, you've been awarded this other scholarship. What do you think made them look at you though? I did have a portfolio and with Ms. Dana, we kind of cultivated a sketching portfolio that encompassed not only ready to wear, but we did a little bit of couture work. We did a little bit of avant-garde work. And then I sewed my own, I transformed one of my hot couture avant-garde looks into a Halloween costume. And we sewed that that year, made that all. So documenting that whole process and submitting that alongside the portfolio, making sure it was well-rounded. I think that's what gave me a one-up, but I think more so looking at it now, having been at SCAD and kind of seeing the way that the professors look at things, I think one of the most initial things they were looking at was potential and that ultimate foundation of there is an interest here that we can further cultivate and develop when she gets here. And I think looking at that and recognizing that innate interest and foundation in what I had done was kind of what was the will give her a chance and see how she can develop as an artist and as a creative when she gets here. Now that is the transition from high school direct to college life. If you had to advise a young person your age, what would you tell them that walk is like and what would you tell them to be prepared to do? Not easy, especially when you're looking at doing something that's completely different from what you've done your whole life. It's not easy. And I think coming from a developing country like Belize, there's only so many paths that you can go, you know, to be able to make it and survive. There's little to no room for outside the box. And I think when you're looking at not following the norm, the primary school, high school, sixth form, UB, and following that stereotypical narrative, there's going to be difficulty. So to anybody out there who wants to do it, I'm going to tell you straight up, it's not easy. You're going to have setbacks and you're going to experience hardships throughout the whole process. But the one thing you need to have is an open mind and to accept that, yes, there are going to be these hardships, but you've got to remain focused on where it is you see yourself afterwards. If you don't see yourself conforming to that stereotypical narrative, then don't settle for it. Keep your dream with you and keep that idea of where you feel you need to be and where you want to be and push it. And if you have the right support, you'll get there. Well, folks, you heard it. As a student, as a young adult aspiring, look at yourself, dedicate yourself, work hard, stay at it, dream, work at the dream, don't walk away from the dream. That's Caitlin from high school to college. We will check back in with her in just a moment. Perfect tips for perfect success, looking at adulting, college and career building. We'll be right back. 